Mate, so I'm Chappers. And I'm the captain. We're here today with a brand new amplifier from Fender Amplification coming at you devil style with the machete. Yeah, it's a, uh, this little bad boy here got released earlier on this year at the NAMM show. Uh, it's called the machete. Um, Fender have kind of uh, marketed this as, as a high gain Fender option. Um, all tube from their Pro Series tube guitar amplifiers. Um, I must admit, I kind of this is the first time uh, I've really plugged this in, and I was expecting it to be just an out and out kind of like you know high gain boogie EVH kind of just like wah. And actually, I'm kind of we were, uh, we were very pleasantly surprised. Yeah, this 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 is actually I would definitely definitely consider this. You know, keep watching this video regardless of what kind of music you're into because this is a real do all kind of amplifier. Yeah, I think the the sort of we thought it would be a high gain saturated amplifier yeah. with maybe a good clean tone because it's a Fender. Yeah. And I said to uh, Rabia, who's on this camera here, I said, could you try and get me like a good bluesy crunch tone? And yeah. my word, yeah. it's got a great bluesy crunch yeah. tone. So it's a very, you know, it's a typical American sounding, um, you know, quality amplifier. So, and it's got some funky features as well that we'll come, come across. It, you know, in terms of um, overall, it's a pretty straightforward two channel amplifier. Um, but it has some crazy kind of features, very pro spec kind of features, um, MIDI foot switchable, um, separate effects loop on the rear, cabinet emulation for doing DI'd recording, you know, balanced output, stuff like that. So it's got some cool stuff on the back panel, which if you want to check out the Anderson's website, you can read more about. We're going to focus predominantly on the tone. Um, so we're going to start with the clean channel. The first thing that this amplifier has uh, and this is quite an interesting feature. I've, you don't see this generally on guitar amplifiers. It has a 6 dB input reduction switch, which Fender say if you're using it with very high output pickups, um, EMGs, EMGs or some of the you know, those bombs. type of things, and where you get that kind of nasty input clipping on the amplifier, particularly on the clean sound, you can basically pump this little button in here. I'll show you the difference it makes when Rob's playing. It, what's, yours isn't terribly high output. No, it's, it? not, well, it's not massively high output at all, but let's just have a listen yeah. to it anyway. So this is what that's without, so with. So you can hear it just cleans yeah, up just a little bit. Down. Um, we've got a digital reverb circuit in here. So to be honest, it's one of those kind of things, things that the people kind of uh, they go, oh, digital. I'm not sure if I like that. That's a throwback to maybe five, ten year old. Digital so reverb is amazing. Yeah, you wouldn't. You, it's really tough now to, to yeah. know whether it's digi or, or spring. And of course, if being digital, you get all the benefits of you know you haven't got a big reverb tray that's clanging about. Or Let's just whack on some reverb and I'll play some chordy. It's nice. It's yeah. natural. It's cavernous. So. I'm going to take the um, I'm going to take the input sort of pad switch off because these aren't terribly high output pickups, uh, and we'll start basically with just the, the clean channel with pretty much everything at 12 o'clock. It has what's called a notch filter on both channels. Um, I don't know whether Fender will be too happy about me saying this, but it, it's kind of a taking the idea that Blackstar had with the ISF feature. So uh, I'm sure Fender have voiced this slightly differently, but essentially the idea is by turning it one way, uh, the amp takes on a more British characteristic mm. tonally, and by turning it the other way, a more American characteristic tonally.
si sign of a, a well-voiced amplifier was when actually my favorite tone is pretty much everything in the middle. In the middle. <laughs> so I think they voiced that well. It's an incredibly responsive EQ. You can it's really feel tons really of, punchy too. Like yeah. this little box is just pushing the, the volume. It's just forward. a 112 combo. This is. <coughs> oh really? Yeah, it's just a 112. So a couple of the other features that we can do is, and it's got a beautifully pushed kind of clean sound. So I can either get some gain from the clean sound by just increasing the, ga the gain control. So I'll... actually kick in an extra gain stage by pulling out the volume control here. So here we go. It's the and best time I've played in a long time. It's and it really doesn't good. have that. Um, I think Fender are one of the <coughs> best companies I've ever dealt with for making 1 by 12 combos that don't sound small. If I think of, um, well, I'm not going to name names, but you know, pretty much most other brands, when you when you think of a 112 combo, it's kind of. I think a brand. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it, they tend to be kind of like very kind of narrow, boxy sort of sounding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, you look at all my favorite, you know, Hot Rod Deluxes and yeah, yeah. Blues Juniors, and they, they they sound big even though they're actually still one by two. This is the best Fender amp I think I've played. Because you, you can get that kind of Hot Rod Deluxe clean from it. Yeah, it's probably um, not quite as saggy as a Hot Rod Deluxe, probably not quite as vintage We sounding. should mention that there are, there are settings to loosen it up yep. or tighten it up as well. So we'll, we'll get to that bit at the end. So <coughs> the final control that we've got on the clean section here is just a brightness switch. Now okay. these are really useful again if you've, if you've done your sound check in, in a room that's got no people in it and then people come in and you think, I just need a little bit of extra cut. So I'll just pull the, the knob out whilst Rob's playing. subtle but you can kind of hear that slight extra it's attack. really easy to play it just feels yeah. like it connects with you it's really good and quiet as well isn't yeah, it? yeah, yeah it's pretty yeah, quiet yeah. so that's channel one um, really like that going well so far so channel two which as I said I can switch either using the foot switch that comes with this amplifier or if I'm using a MIDI uh, effects setup I can control the channels from there so uh, and again we'll do the same as we did before we're gonna start with everything at 12 o'clock and um, uh, you'll see, I'll, I'll fiddle around with the, the gain settings and stuff and the tone settings while we're... <laughs> That's good. That's good. really f
turn the reverb off? It's, yeah, it's almost a shame to change any of the settings, isn't yeah. it? I have what? to say, whoever at Fender voiced this, yeah. you deserve a medal. This, this is really, probably really the best job. voiced, just yeah. change nothing amplifier yeah. that I've ever heard. Yeah, it's brilliant. Uh, right, I'll take the, the reverb, reverb and right down. And give it a little bit less top end, it's a bit, a bit, tight, a bit well, bright let me, for me. Um, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll then, just play I'll, with I'll it while I'm playing. Can you tell we're excited? Yes, we are excited. Let's take a little bit of that treble off, as Rob's saying, and a little bit less mid-range. Let me just try it now. See. So I'm going to take the gain right down to minimum and then move it through. You can just hear, okay, and then basically move it through to, to maximum but without adjusting anything else. So here we go. Nice to play an amplifier where like every single gain stage is got a, a use. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's not you're not you're not dialing then going. Oh, I don't sound that great. Doesn't sound that great. Oh, there's the sweet spot. It's yeah, like yeah. every yeah. setting is is good yeah. for you know like a type of music. Um, love this amplifier. I must admit, I kind of uh, really not what I expected at all. Seriously, love this. So. Um, <coughs> I can actually hear as well within that gain stage, kind of almost three stages of gain coming in. So yeah, yeah. Very, very low, it was just kind of fat and a Take bit you to the dirty. second stage and see if you can pick up on some of the subtle stuff and I'll back yeah. up the volume a little bit. So this is, I think again, on its first stage, it's just that kind of fat, slightly dirty sound. And, and round about kind of getting towards halfway, you can kind of hear this second yeah. stage of gain kick in. And it almost they, a little bit of fuzz They definitely the designed this for the more modern kind of gent styles of playing. Yeah. Um, gent is a style now. And um, that you can you can hear they've not given it too much saturation to make it sound yes. false and digital. It's very yeah. organic and natural. Yeah. So. <laughs> It's not just a metal amp, is it? It's great. So I'm going to leave the gain about halfway up and just going to do a little section here where I'll play around with the tone controls and the notch controls. So if you just chug away. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Such a great Metallica sound. Scoop it a bit more. Up a little bit. That's it, that's it. Play all day long. Uh, what I really want to hear now is Captain Lee play some blues and then get your gentle. Let's um, let me just do the the speaker damping thing. Okay, you. right. Uh, do you know what though? I tell you, I'm going back every single time to everything at twelve o'clock for my favourite kind of sound on this. It's I've done thing. I this this has got to be um, right up there with the the most powerful EQ I've ever used on an amplifier. You know, tiny changes like that making massive yeah, yeah, difference to yeah. the tone. So, speaker dampening. What's speaker dampening? It's it's essentially the reaction between the power amp and the speaker. So you've got basically a power amplifier driving a speaker back and forth to, to um, create the tone. And by tightening the damping, that means the speaker's very reactive to every kind of movement that the, uh, the amp's trying to make it do. And by loosening the, the damping, uh, the speaker becomes sort of, you know, a little bit more sloppy in its response and it changes the tone of the, the guitar amp. So we can go from uh, a loose sound, it's a five position switch on here. This is maximum looseness. To maximum tightness. to loose again. Oh, such a great amp. It, <laughs> it's a great amp. If, if you yeah, want to yeah. buy a metal amp, buy this amp. It's a great amp. <clears throat> it's great. crazy, isn't it? And, you know, this is this is definitely not the brand you would expect to have on the front of the amplifier. Uh, no, I'm astounded. I'm actually astounded. We need to get a beer up to play it, mate. Yeah. Get off the floor. Give me that camera. Ugh. Look at this man. He's been... <laughs> look at the service this man has been doing. <laughs> We've got a uh, Music Man Luke here with a set of EMG pickups in here. I'm just gonna, before we get B to go over to the gain channel, which is kind of pretty much where it's at, I did just wanna demo how effective this um, little dampening switch is here. If B plays some kind of heavy funk, you can, and, I, and I leave this switched off, you can just hear how the input stage of the amplifier doesn't, like, it's kind of clipping it in, a, in a not terribly pleasant way. So if you play some quite heavy handed, So you can just see it just takes the edge off. It's pretty subtle. Um, but anyway, so I'm going to pop um, B over onto the gain channel now. I'll leave everything at 12 o'clock. I might just adjust it a bit to get a sound that I think suits. And uh, take it away.
Yeah, why don't you Power play that new riff kind of. Sounding yeah, it's the most responsive EQ yeah. I've ever heard it's from an album. It's crazy, isn't it? Absolutely <laughs> crazy. Just thought we'd uh, grab a pretty strat. Uh, this is some kind of 2000 and... Oh, it's Custom Shop. Woohoo! It's like a 2012 Custom Shop strat deluxe thingy. Because you've got to put a fender um, through a fender just to try it out. Yeah, you? iMac on the clean channel. Slightly pushed gain sound. Pretty much everything on 12. I've rolled the notch down a bit because it takes a little bit of the treble yeah. off and uh, give myself a little bit more reverb because I love reverb. So. Astounded at Anderton's. Talk yes, we, we were expecting that, were we? No, I, I mean, I tell you, this is a this is you know a bit of shopkeeper talk here. This has actually been stock. This has been in stock for about probably three months. Really? And I can tell you now, in three months, I don't think a single person has come through the store and asked to try it. Wow. It's kind of this is the problem, I think, when you have a brand that is so synonymous with a certain type of tone and sound, and they kind of want to get somewhere new. The public just kind of almost just ignore it. So I hope that this video has kind of helped to, to change perceptions. And you really should, next time you're at your local guitar store, especially if you come to Anderton's, um, ask to try this because we've tried it with a Strat, we've tried it with a Les Paul, we've tried it with Rob's ML1, we've tried it with a, a EMG loaded Music Man Luke, and it just kicks ass. Well, I just, just posted to Facebook and just said it's the best metal amp I think I've tried in really? years and years and it's years. It's crazy, years. isn't it? Yeah. So it's only available as a combo at the moment. Rob has quite rightly said, you know, if this catches on, I hope Fender do this as a, a head and cab. Got to like, do a head and cab. This is going to be monstrous. Ridiculous. I don't think we've told you the price. I haven't intentionally left this kind of turned around the whole way through the video, but uh, there it is now. See, it's £1,500. Um, I mean, really, when you think... You know, what's it, that's a thousand pounds less, or is it nearly nearly half the price, I think, of a Boogie Mark V or something like that. So, I mean, again, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to pretend this is a cheap amplifier, but I'm just putting things in context, you know. It's, it's a great uh, amplifier. It's a great amp for that to. kind of money, yeah. isn't it? So Really good. And there's, you know, what what wouldn't it do? It's a great little well, yeah. club amp, you know, it's just... <laughs> that's um, a great question. Uh, what doesn't it do? I don't know, I mean, it's, it doesn't... It does a bit of everything, doesn't it? It's got it's got some cool tunes. 50 watts, all valve. Yeah, 50 watts, all valve. Yeah. Uh, you can run extension speakers out of it if you want to. Remember, again, for a, for a pro guy who's maybe doing some recording, has a balanced DI output with cabinet emulation as well, so mm. you could run this straight into your, your console or your interface and just um, yeah. record it. I'm, you know, blown away. I kind of, I don't know if machete, where is our machete? We, we, we had a machete, we were gonna do a bunch of machete film bits in here, but we, we got so excited about the amp. So there it is, machete! <laughs> But we, we, we didn't do any machete bits. No, yeah. actually, to be honest... I was going to cut him open, get his guts and jump out yeah. of the window, but we thought probably... Do you know why we had all these gags lined up? 
because we thought maybe the amp wasn't going to be that amazing and we'd have to fill it up with kind of yeah. silly gags. But, but actually, it's actually it's really good. the amp's been amazing, yeah. so no need to no, do that. No need to gag, so, the amp's great. Anyway, congratulations I've been, Fender, yeah. I've been Rob Chappers. I've been the captain. Take it easy. Hey, what's your favorite game to play?